What's up, internet? So, I'm doing uh, a few things today that uh, I told myself I probably wouldn't be doing. Uh, I can't tell if you can hear me or not. Okay, hopefully the sound is working. Anyway, like I said, uh, so there's a few things that I told myself uh, and others that I'd probably never do. Um, one of them is this right here, vlogging and uh, being in front of the camera. I typically am behind the camera. Uh, I'm a filmmaker. Uh, if you don't know, I have a channel uh, production company called Beardsley Productions. And um, I do music videos, um, commercials, um, I've done a feature film, um, new weddings, um, you know, just all around good stuff. Um, anyway, I uh, generally don't like how I sound on camera, I don't like how I look on camera, so um, this year I told myself I was going to do more of that, more of putting myself out there and just trying some of this stuff. So. This is my first video on, on my personal channel, and we'll, we'll see what, what happens. Uh, the second thing that I said I would never do again is uh, buy a point-and-shoot camera. Uh, why would a filmmaker buy a point-and-shoot camera? Well, we're going to go over those reasons, so roll that intro. Uh, anyway, this isn't going to be an unboxing video or anything like that. I don't have a bunch of cameras set up. Just the one right here. Um, so I'm just gonna... Okay, so right in the box, uh, I got the content creator kit. Uh, and it's pretty sweet. There's some cool stuff in here. I got a memory card carrying case. I haven't seen uh, and I've seen them, I just haven't personally used one, so that'll be cool. I won't have my memory cards floating around all over the place. Um, we got a nice little pouch to carry the camera. Yes, it is that tiny. The camera is that tiny. Got one of these little vlogging uh, handle grip thingies here. Um, I was on the fence on this. I didn't think I was going to get it. And then I watched a few videos and it seemed like even if I'm not gonna be doing this kind of vlogging sort of stuff, um, just to have that kind of control right there. It's a Bluetooth, so it doesn't have to be right connected to the camera. Um, all around, it seemed like a pretty good thing to have. So uh, I got it. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then here's the camera itself. It's the, uh, the Sony ZV-1. Uh, I don't even know if I have autofocus on right now. So anyway, there, there's the camera. Uh, let me. Uh, oh, I forgot. I forgot I got the white one. There it is. There it is. Man, I have not held a point and shoot camera in. 10 years, this is weird. This is super weird. This is cool though, I like this. This feels quality. Um, all right, so there's there's that, that's cool. Um, obviously comes with a battery and a little cable in there. Um, a, couple, a couple other accessories I've got here. Um, so this is a little uh, thread that you can put around the end of your lens um, to be able to give you some filter options. Um, got a little cage for it. Uh, maybe I'll do a product photo or something once this is all set up in a later video or something. Um, oh, we got some extra batteries because I hear that's one of the downsides of this little camera is that the battery is dookie. That's about it. Okay, so that's everything that I got in the kit today. So now, I wanted to talk, like real talk here. Uh, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> so, um, I kinda wanna go over the, the features of this little camera first, and then I kinda wanna go over the pros and the cons of each of those features. Um, 
you know, and maybe they might be different for, for you, depending on where you are in your filmmaking and or photography walk. Um, so these are, are my personal reasons, all right? These may not apply to you, so. Okay, so the first thing I have is the size slash form factor. It is small. I mean, look at this. This is insane, right? I think about going out and filmmaking or even just grabbing, you know, uh, some shots downtown or something. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we're gonna take something like this. That's, that's one example, but I have three cameras that are roughly that size when they're built up. Of course, it doesn't have to be that big, um, but even the one that I'm filming on right now is, is big and it's cumbersome. And you know, you've got all these lenses and batteries and stuff and uh, it's, it's a lot. So um, the, I'd say one of the pros of, of the size is that it's pocketable, obviously. I can put that right in my pocket. I don't have to worry about it. If I don't use it, it's not that big of a deal but it, it's there if I need it, you know? Um, I would say another uh, pro would be that it's safe, so to speak. Um, you, you're not calling a lot of attention to yourself. You got just a little, you know, a touristy camera almost, so to speak. Uh, and, and I like that sometimes. I like, you know, depending on the traffic of the area, if I'm unfamiliar with the environment. Um, and, and safe doesn't necessarily even mean that you're in a bad area. It could mean, uh, could mean that you're on a boat, <laughs> you know, or um, you're at the beach, or you're you're somewhere where there's potential hazard that you could lose the camera. Um, so it's safe. I mean, it's not a cheap cheap camera by any means, but it's it's not thousands of dollars like some of my other uh, cameras that I used to make money with, you know. <clears throat> um, another pro, I would say is the sensor size, believe it or not. Um, so this can be a pro or a con, depending on what sort of camera you're comparing it to. So personally, I would compare this in my workflow um, to something that I would get like a phone or um, you know an action camera, something like that. Um, you know, but others may be using it as like a main camera, and in which case. Um, you know, they might be comparing it to something like the Sony A60, A6000 series, A6500, that sort of thing, um, which are fantastic cameras, by the way. Um, so the, the sensor size um, is a one inch sensor, so that's larger than most phones, most action cameras, but it's smaller than um, you know, mirrorless, most mirrorless cameras. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle there, it's, it's a weird. Um, so I would say another pro is that it can be um, put into tight spaces, used as a crash cam. Um, you know, it, it's tiny, like we went over, it's, it's small. Uh, so I, I feel good about putting that on a dash or even mounting it outside of a vehicle or something. Again, that goes back to the safe, you know. Um, I don't, I don't want to mount one of my <laughs> more expensive and more useful, I wouldn't say useful, but one of my more expensive cameras um, to the outside of a vehicle because, you know, obviously if something happens to it, you're out all of that money. And, you know, the last pro uh, on the, uh, the size form factor is that um, I think it's, it's ultimately, it's, it's roughly, you know, the same size. So, so for instance, here's, Here's my uh, DJI Osmo action camera, um, and then here's here's this uh, the uh, the Sony ZV1. So I mean, they're they're comparable. It, this is clearly a larger camera, but um, I would say it has a ton more flexibility than this one, um, and way way better image quality. Cons of the small uh, small size, the form factor, um, small batteries. Am I right? I mean. Nobody likes a small battery. Uh, that's there's nothing that really that I don't think that you could argue about a pro of a small battery. Uh, it's gonna more than likely die sooner, overheat quicker, um, you know, just overall be a hassle. So um, that's why I got some extra batteries here. Um, one of the nice things about this camera, though, is that you can charge it while you're not using it using just the USB, uh, just the micro USB. 
on the side. Um, or you can also charge your batteries using one of those little battery packs. Um, overheating, I've heard from a few that this camera does tend to overheat a little bit. Um, I've owned some Sony cameras in the past and I can say that that is true. Um, they do have a tendency to pack as much as they possibly can into these small form factors and it it really um, sometimes can be frustrating, you know, when you, um, you're trying to push 4K and obviously one of these tiny little guys and it just overheats or the battery just gets drained, like I understand it, um, but always have a, you know, a couple of batteries or a spare uh, backup source of power and you should be good. In my, one of my notes for a con, I, I wrote that it's not a serious camera and um, I, what I mean by that is it's not a DSLR or a mirrorless uh, or you know a big cinema rig um, and you're not out there capturing the world's best content. But I think that's kind of the point. That's kind of the point of why I got this camera is because I don't, I don't always need to be doing that, you know? I don't always need to have five plus grand on my shoulder when I'm out just hanging out in the city. Um, that's probably not a very good look, honestly. Um, so I think that's kind of the point. I, I, I would say that um, not being a serious camera is is a con in, in some people's minds, but more or less, um, I see that as, as a good thing with this particular camera because I have other cameras and if I want it to be a serious camera then, then I can you know I, I've got that option um, so for me again these are my thoughts personally uh, I, I like that it's not a, a serious camera I opted for the white one because uh, I, I remember seeing like some some silvery designs and like I remember when you could get like um, the blue and like the silver and like the Kodak uh, point-and-shoot cameras I thought those were really cool, and so the fact that there was something other than just the standard black, I decided might as well. And I haven't seen a review on this particular camera yet, uh, the white edition, so here it is. If you guys, just, anyone wants to see it, it's pretty, uh, pretty white. Um, and then the last con is that, yeah, it's a smaller sensor, obviously. It's uh, smaller than a DSLR sensor, um, but I think for, for what they've been able to accomplish, um, that doesn't really seem to matter too much. Um, so those are all my points for the form factor. Um, another point to this camera is uh, that it only has one lens. It's, it's fixed in the body. You, you, know, you don't get to choose, maybe I want to use this nice uh, 50 millimeter with the epic bokeh. Um, or you know my Sigma 18 to 35 that I'm filming on right now, um, you know that's you get what you get. It's 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 right there. So that's uh, that's the, the the point kind of um, the the feature I guess I'll say the, the feature of this camera. So let me go over the pros and cons there. Okay, so the first pro about having the lens attached and only being the only lens that you get is it retracts right into the camera. That is awesome. I've never had this sort of convenience in, you know, I, I'd say this is a quality setup. I've never had this uh, sort of convenience in a setup where it just directly goes right in there. I've always had a, another lens to deal with. Um, it's already chosen for you. The lens, you don't have to, you know, there've been times where I want to go downtown. I want to take my 18 to 35. Do I take my 35 uh, 2.0? No, I've already got the 35 on that range, but I should maybe take my 50 in case I want to get a little bit closer. Um, I'm building up this kit and half of it is lenses and they're expensive and they're fragile. And if something happens, if I drop the bag, if it's not zipped up right or whatever, something happens, there goes, you know, a huge portion of your kit. And uh, I, I like not having to think about it. There, I don't have to make that choice. It's, this is it right here. And, you know, I've got, uh, they say it's an equivalent to 24 to 70 focal length lens on here. Uh, 1.8 to 2.8 minimum aperture. So that's pretty solid. I think that's pretty good. Um, so that actually leads me right into the next point. It's 1.8 to 2.8. 
that's that's pretty good most kit lenses start at 3.5 when you're buying a DSLR um, at least when I was buying the Sony uh, kit lenses they were they started at 3.5 which I mean if you know if this stuff is all confusing to you then just skip past this but people that know about lenses this this is kind of a big deal uh, 1.8 on you know a small uh, point-and-shoot camera and then at its max uh, 70 equivalent millimeters it's a 2.8 um, that's that's pretty cool you know I, th I think that's actually really good um, obviously you can go lower than that 1.4 um, I've had 1.4 Sigma on the Sony a6500 that was awesome I've got a 0.95 um, cinema lens and of course of course it you know you can do better than that but in this little form factor come on I don't think so this is insane um, and then the last pro of this little lens is the autofocus Sony has been dominating the game in autofocus Sony and Canon I think are just like going head-to-head -head with uh, the autofocus the last couple of years and um, from everything I've seen online this thing is no slouch it's gonna definitely hold its own with the autofocus um, which is good because that brings me into a con of this uh, feature which is it has horrible horrible manual focus uh, from what I've seen you basically when it's out you have to fiddle with it so much and kind of fight the, the robotics in it and um, if you want manual focus this is not the camera for you that's uh, really one of the reasons I got this camera um, because I don't have to worry about it I don't have to worry about the focus I can just point it and shoot it get it <laughs> anyway a con obviously you can't change the lenses we already went over that one con that I've heard people say is you know this is a vlogging camera it's made for vlogging um, but when you're shooting 4k and you're shooting with the steady shot on which a lot of us probably would be um, it, it punches in so your 24 is probably more like a 30 or maybe even closer to a 35 millimeter shot which is getting really tight on your face um, we went over I don't really like this you know being on camera I don't want my face way up here um, I don't want everybody to have to see that so I don't you know I can understand that with the uh, the, the crop factor and all that so my only solution to that I think is to get you know an extendable extendable uh, selfie stick or something like that um, or they do make some of those little adapters you can put on the end of your lens um, to widen your view so you know maybe maybe I'll try some of those in the future overall I think that pretty much you know wraps up the the single lens um, portion of my thoughts so I've got price on here and this is gonna be a pretty quick one uh, at the time of filming this video the price for just the camera is about 750 um, and I got the creator kit and some accessories so you know I'm a little bit more than that but you don't have to you can pretty much just get the camera make sure you have a battery and a memory card and you're good to go for what you're getting I think it's a great deal um, personally I think it's a great deal it's more expensive than like a GoPro but it's not nearly as expensive as like a you know Sony a7 III or something like that again almost everything is included all you need really is your own memory card and, and you're good to go so an entire included pack for for that base price is pretty good the con though is that that could be expensive you know it's a point-and-shoot camera after all and um, you know I haven't even talked about the bigger brothers the um, the RX 100 series um, which is pretty much what everyone speculates that this camera is a product of the RX 100 series minus a few features adding a few features and just making it better for vlogging and content creating overall I think they, they nailed it on this camera I mean obviously I haven't even turned the thing on yet I've just watched a lot of reviews I'm gonna be posting more videos about it uh, I'm gonna be using it for a number of things um, in fact I'm gonna go over a list of things that I plan on using this thing for besides vlogging before I do that I've got a couple general pros and cons um, so one of the pros um, this thing has built-in ND filters that's awesome um, in a point-and-shoot camera I mean my Sony regular the mirrorless didn't even have that so the fact that they have that on this that, that just tells me that they, they already have been thinking about content creators and um, how, to, how to really get that shallow depth of field without 
tweaking your um, shutter, you know, your frame rate, and, and just making things look weird and digital. Um, they've, they've been thinking about it and they addressed it and that's awesome. This thing, apparently the microphone on this is, is pretty solid. It's got, um, it's like a directional microphone and um, I hear that it, it came from one of, one of their higher end lines. I think one of the RX 100s. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'm not entirely sure which series, but I did hear that it came from one of their better cameras and that they're using it on this one now because it has superior audio quality, which is great. Good for you, Sony. Um, the flip screen, <laughs> general, this is a general pro, but I mean, I think everybody would love to have this like five years ago, <laughs> right? This is what we've been asking for forever. One of the main reasons, I wouldn't say it's one of the main reasons I got rid of my Sony's, but if I were able to, I mean, I'm not, sometimes I'm not even filming myself. Sometimes it's just backed up into a corner and it's a tight space and you need to be able to see your, your framing, um, before you press that record button and you can't get behind the camera, you know. Um, that's been a few situations for me using my older Sony's. Um, even though they are small, nice and compact, they're unusable in certain situations unless you have a monitor hooked up and you can actually see what you're doing. Um, so the flip screen, that's awesome. I don't really have too many other cons on this um, other than what I had already gone over. I guess I'll, I will say that um, the the uh, SD card reader, from what I understand, doesn't accept the newer, the SDXC2. Uh, it's just the, the original, um, which, I mean, that's, that's okay. Um, I did see one YouTuber say that you do want to still use the higher end cards if you have them because it'll make the transfer to your computer faster. Um, even though the write speed on the camera itself won't be faster, it'll just make your life easier uh, later on. So if you have the higher speed cards, go ahead and use those anyway. There won't be any ill effects. Pretty much it. I mean, there have been plenty of other reviews on, on the blur button and, um, you know, just all of the other little features there. Um, I'm excited to dive into it. I'm definitely going to put it in through its paces, um, but I kind of wanted to talk about just a few ways that I'm planning on using this that isn't necessarily vlogging. So um, the first one is behind the scenes footage. Um, there have been plenty of times where I want to have an external shot of me doing something or my crew or, you know, there's just a cool production and my good cameras are being used. And, you know, there's a, I can definitely use my action camera. I could use my phone, um, but the action camera never has the quality really that I'm looking for and it you know it takes a lot of fiddling with it in the settings a lot of time that I don't have on set just to get that that secondary behind the scenes shot that nobody asked for um, and then you know I can use my phone but I, I hardly ever use my phone for taking videos um, you know I, I just if it it's lost or stolen and broken um, and my whole life is on there so for one of, that's one of the main reasons that I refrain from using it also I just I don't feel like phone video quality is there yet I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it um, it's great don't get me wrong it's good it's really really good um, but you know if, if you're doing professional work and even in a pinch if something happens to one of your bigger cameras and you whip out your phone I mean, yeah, good. you got the shot more than likely and it's gonna you know, be workable and you can use it. Um, but the client's probably not gonna want you back, you know, um, as opposed to if something, you know, a lens breaks or the camera body itself takes a tumble or something and I need something quick, um, I'll pull this guy out. It doesn't, I mean, it's not going to look necessarily as professional as my big rig on, with the cage and you know, the monitors and all, all that, but it's something and it'll be way, way better than the phone quality wise, way, way better than the GoPro or the action camera, you know, and in a pinch, it could be that saving grace there. So that's one, um, that was kind of two reasons jumbled into, into each other is, uh, to have as a, a handy, quick, uh, emergency camera. Um, but also to have as a, a B roll or not necessarily B roll, but like a backup, um, behind the scenes camera. The uh, second or third, I guess, reason um, use that I have for this camera is in tight spaces. Um, again, 
if I'm doing an interior car scene or um, I want to put it in a drawer or, you know, just something where I want to have it in a small area and have the framing, you know, be more artistic and creative. Um, my choices, again, are an action camera or my phone. And we've already gone over why I don't want to use my phone on projects, especially if it's going to be up high in the air or somebody's going to be touching it or you, they're just... I don't want my phone used for production, plain and simple. And again, an action camera is great. It has its place and in, in, even in productions, I think um, I've used action cameras, um, but they're not for every situation just because they can fit. So that said, um, I, having a little bit of a focal range where I can, I can mess around with the distance, you know, tighter, wider shots, whatever. Um, and just having that ability to go down to that 1.8 with the ND filters and all of that just built into this little package. Um, that's gonna be an awesome secondary, like tight angle shot. I guess a third or fourth uh, thing that I, that I would do with this camera, the thing that I would do with this camera. Uh, no, the uh, fourth use that I have is um, if, if I want to have a second camera and I want to travel light. So if I'm if I'm traveling somewhere to do an interview and I don't want to be carrying, you know, a duffel bag and a backpack and my laptop bag and rolling around, you know, my stands and all of my lights and my lenses and, and everything. If, if I just want to travel light, maybe one portable tripod and one main camera, probably the GH5S because it is the smallest of my others. Um, more than likely what I would do is have the GH5S, a couple lenses, and then this as my second camera, as my B-roll camera, as my second angle for interviews. Um, I haven't tried splicing the footage, obviously, with any of my other cameras. We'll do more tests on that if you, uh, if you guys are interested in that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, just having that secondary angle, um, it's, it's an angle that I would never have before, and, and now it's, it's literally right here. And the fifth reason uh, that I would bring this camera uh, into my collection that's not vlogging related, um, I guess it is a little bit vlogging related. Um, this is probably the most important reason and the most deciding factor of me getting this camera. Um, there have been many, many times where I'm going to do something fun. Maybe I've got the dogs, you know, um, and, and it's something that I really want to enjoy, but I also want to document. And, you know, I'd, again, I don't want to have an action camera running around. That kind of looks weird sometimes. Um, I don't want to use my phone. But, um, I always have this debate. Do I bring my camera? If I do, which camera do I bring? Uh, which lenses do I bring? Do I have enough batteries uh, to, to last the whole shoot? Uh, do I bring a tripod? This thing's gonna get heavy. Do I need a gimbal? Um, that's another thing. This thing has uh, image stabilization. This is the only camera that I have besides the action camera that actually has image stabilization. My C200, the Z Cam, this GH5S, none of those have image stabilization, which is fine. I don't need it. I'm a filmmaker, right? We don't we don't use that stuff, but what if you do? <laughs> what if you're just walking around and you don't want to have a tripod and you don't want to have a gimbal and you don't want to have a whole setup attached to you and you want to you know not look like a crazy person? But I, I do think that uh, this being you know such a small package is is going to be a lot easier to make that decision. It's something that I don't even have to think about it. I'll put it in my fanny pack and I'll be out of my way, right? It's it's there if I need it. If I don't, it's not even a big deal. It's just floating around with my change and my wallet and other stuff. So to me, that is the most important thing is that I can have this on me all the time. Um, and if I want to go on a day trip or a weekend trip or something and I want to document it, I can put this, I can put my little uh, Mavic drone in a bag. I can even put the action camera too in the, if, because it's waterproof, you know, if I wanted to have something like that. And then I'm covered for pretty much everything. I've got my main camera, I've got my action camera, I've got the drone. You know, you bring a couple little um, audio recorders and you have a legitimate production in a fanny pack, man. Like, what? <laughs> that's crazy. I think, I think ultimately that's gonna be, you know, the, the best uh, experience for me is just having that. Um, 
but yeah i think that pretty much wraps it up um if you guys like this video give me you know the the youtube thing with the like click all the buttons um if if you got any value out of this you know let me know in the comments below also let me know you know what you liked what you didn't like uh what things that i could work on this is my first video like this uh, i don't really do this kind of stuff um and I'm still kind of trying to figure this out, you know, this whole channel thing. So if there's something that you like, if you like me going over gear, I've got a ton of gear I can go over. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, a lot of little tips and tricks, things that I know um, that a lot of other cinematographers aren't doing. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that necessarily. I don't want to put any like cinematographers down, but just little things along the way that you know I've figured out that I haven't seen necessarily tutorials on and stuff. And uh, I'm not trying to hoard any information here. Um, but yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, if you want to see just sample footage, maybe just a reel put together of just this, uh, what what I can do with the ZV1, let me know. Maybe I'll do something like that. Um, if you want to see more of my day life, I've got a day job, you know. Um, if you want to see that kind of stuff, well, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to be a vlog, if it's going to be uh, like an unboxing sort of thing, if it's going to be a gear review. Maybe it's just maybe it's just me and my life, you know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you guys uh, found any enjoyment from this, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, all of that. And uh, I thank you, Internet. Okay, so a couple actually other pros that I thought about or uses that I'm going to use this for. Um, I, I totally forgot to even talk about this part. Um, so I do a lot of conferencing, web conferencing stuff. I, <laughs> I use a Dell laptop and the webcam on there is horrible. Um, Again, I can use my phone, and I do use my phone currently for a lot of um, my conferences, but sometimes I need to be on my computer and actually share my screen. Um, and, you know, I just need it to be able to integrate with my computer, and it just doesn't. Um, I can hook up my DJI Osmo action camera, but again, the quality is just not great. Um, I'm a filmmaker and a cinematographer, and if I'm doing, you know, a commercial for for a company or if I'm meeting somebody especially for the first time I really want to make that the good impression um, and you know I want to have a, I'm not saying this is an over-the-top setup but I want to have something nice um, when they first see it so having this little guy um, being able to you know use it basically as a webcam I think that's gonna be killer that's gonna be really awesome you know I said I wouldn't use this as a vlogging camera that's not necessarily true um, I, it's built to be a vlogging camera. It's literally content creation made simple. Content creators and vloggers. Um, this camera really does scream to be used as a vlogging setup. Um, so I might, might try it. I don't know. Um, again, I don't like my voice. I don't like my face. I don't like being on camera at all. Um, but this thing is just gonna make it so easy. You, you literally you flip open the screen and it turns on. You press the button and you're ready. You know you're going. Um, again, the audio it's it's great. Um, I'm, I don't have to have even even with my Osmo if I'm trying to go out and do something. Usually I've got a microphone on there if I'm trying to use any sort of audio from it. Um, I'm gonna put this camera through its paces. I'm gonna let you guys know my honest review and, and if it's if it's something that you might wanna keep in your bag. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks guys.